Hello and welcome to another video. Right, I'm committed now. I have to repair this vintage Casio calculator. It requires some soldering. And before I do that, I want to show you what's in my box of soldering stuff. Uh, but I'm pretty committed because once I've got the soldering stuff out, I've got to move on to the repair. So I've been doing a teeny little bit of soldering for probably about 40 years, something like that. And this is some of the kit that I've acquired over that time. Right, so here we've got a couple of little projects I was working on. I was working on a project ages ago, it went badly wrong, where I'd put six quite flat AA batteries into a uh, battery holder. And I bought a buck boost converter and I was trying to, and there it is, and I've wired it all up so it would output um, some USB and I could use it to charge things. And uh, unfortunately, as I was testing it, I didn't, I'm not an electronics expert, and I think I needed a capacitor um, to smooth it out. And I didn't have one, and I connected it up to a power bank, um, and it blew the power bank, but it was a power bank for some Bluetooth headphones, so it was quite an expensive fail on my point. So we've got some uh, just clips, just general clips to um, for making testing circuits, don't use it hardly at all. I was just dabbling. So we've got a heatproof mat. Don't know what it's made of. Hopefully not asbestos. It's quite recent, probably about ten years ago, maybe. And this is a bit weird. This. Don't know whether you can see that on there. Uh, right, it's a four and a half to six volt portable soldering iron. So the soldering tip comes out like that, and that is the power button for it, and it actually takes two, um, what's this, D-cells, there we go, a little bit of focus for you, I haven't actually used this for maybe three decades, something like that, so, and I've forgotten, but there's, is there a power input, yeah, there's a power input on this, there we go, there's, there's power input, so you can input four and a half to six volts and it will charge NiCad batteries and then you can run the soldering iron off of the NiCad batteries. So for operation with NiCad batteries, two pieces will be enough. Put them in either A or B side of the battery compartment. LED lights up to indicate batteries charging. So I can't even remember how many it takes. All right, let me let me find some. I don't have any have any NiCads, so and I don't have a full set. So I've just got some alkaline and one rechargeable. I'm not going to use it though. So you can put the batteries in either on the A side or the B side, and then slide the cap on. Or oddly, you put them in that way. I suppose that's uh, that's going to be three volts, isn't it? If you put them in up that way then you'd get three volts plus three volts, which would be six volts. But in this case, it's just like that. So I don't have NiCads though, and there's a different charging profile for NiCads. But let's just uh, bung that on now. So I guess it works like this. I might try this, but I haven't got any batteries, uh, suitable batteries for it. Yeah, so basically you push the end and it heats up that tip. So it's like a portable, it's quite heavy with the batteries in it, but it will run on just two batteries. So I might just try and find. Um, I know I've got some C cells like this, some rechargeable ones. I might try that. Depends on how much time I have left at the end of this. I haven't really planned out how this video is going to go because I can't remember exactly what's in the box. So what else have we got in here then? Right, so we've got that. That's part of a standard soldering kit. Uh, I'll explain that later on. I have one of these. I think this is from um, Audi or Lidl Powerfix. And it's a LED magnifier. It's not very good quality. It's a plastic lens. But it helps do the job. And it's got some helping hands in there as well. And a little um, thing to place your soldering iron. And that's quite heavy. It's got a heavy base. And I think it's a sponge or something I can put in there. But I don't, need, I don't use a sponge. Another similar thing with a horribly scratched up 
cheap magnifying glass. This I probably got really on some market stall or something about 30 odd years ago, whatever. That belongs to this soldering iron in here. We'll get that in a minute. I've got a few bits of solder. No markings on that. That's from Macklin's. Uh, that's lead free solder, so most of this is going to be lead free. And this is something I don't see anyone use nowadays. Um, it is a lead free delta tip tinner. And if I remember correctly, it's really hard to get the lid off. So I might show you that in a minute. And these are the two main soldering irons. I'm going to. What's that? It's now. Oh, solar sucker. I think I've used this once. Oh, there we go. Lovely colour. Solar sucker. And this is part of my kit, my soldering kit, but it doesn't belong in my soldering box. This is just a fibre tipped pencil. Ouch, I stabbed myself. <laughs> I need another plaster. I cut myself trying to spruce up a focaccia bread. This is quite boring and I was trying to slice it, it was really hot and I managed to slice my hand instead. Anyway, that's for cleaning up electrical circuits as well. So that used to belong in this box, but the box belongs in the garage and I use that pen for uh, quite frequently so that stays in my office. Right, what else have we got in there, anything? Oh, what's this? Oh, desoldering braid. Yeah, so this is, um, I mean, you'll either, if you're watching this, you've probably done some soldering and you've probably done way more than I have. A tiny little bit of desoldering braid. And basically, if you're not sure about what this is, then when you're trying to remove old solder, you put this braid on the part, part of solder you want to remove and heat up the braid. And it's like a solder wick. And as the solder melts, it melts into the weave of the braid. Um, it's really quite useful stuff, as opposed to using the solder sucker, which is uh, more for like when you've got a pin going through a board. So I'm no expert on any of this. So this is the one I generally use quite free, you know, all the time. Not all the time. If I'm going to solder, this is the one I use. Um, it was pretty cheap. Parkside, I think, is Lidl. So I bought it when it was cheap. It probably came with this solder here. Uh, it's not very strong. It's not very powerful, rather. There we go. Probably tells you on there. 30 watts. It does the job. Some more solder braid. Yeah, more some desoldering wire in there as well. And, uh, but... This is really old. This Weller soldering iron was the one I bought originally when I wanted to get into soldering. But I don't use it now and it always scared me a bit. Multi-purpose soldering gun. This thing weighs a ton. You can tell how old it is. And now I know that you really don't want your plugs done like that. Because, has it got any strain relief in it? Yeah, it's got some strain relief inside there. Um, but I might rewire that plug because that's one obviously back in the day You bought an electrical appliance. It didn't have a plug on it So you bought the plug separately and put it on and now I know better that that is supposed to be inside there in the strain relief Inside there. So if I ever use this again, I'll replace the plug So it's got quite a short wire on it Let's have a look this product is designed for intermittent use. The switch should only be depressed for approximately 12 seconds in every minute. Never take the switch in the on position. So it's a 240 volt, 100 volt amp, whatever that means. You can work that in watts if you know how to do such things. But in less than 12 seconds, this will heat up from cold to melt solder. It is really, really quite fierce and it always scared me a bit. And there's like a, a spade type of soldering tip. And whatever that is. I might give this a demonstration, what do you reckon? Let's get set up. Right, so this is not an ideal setup. You shouldn't really be trying to shoot around a tripod and solder around a tripod. But I haven't, I'll plug this in. 
with the dodgy wired plug and then I'll see if I can get it in shot so you can see when I pull the trigger and you can see how long it takes to heat up and melt this solar. Let's go three, two, one. You can hear it buzzing. There you go, it's melted. So however many seconds that was. <coughs> I need to open the window. What this is designed for, I mean, you probably know, and you probably, if you know about soldering, if you know anything about soldering, you probably know more than I do. But this is designed to get the old solder off your soldering iron tip. So I'll just wait for that to warm up again, and then I'll just dab it in now. Here we go, I can see it's already melting. And you just dab that in there, and it's supposed to take the solder off and leave your tip nice and shiny. But be careful I don't burn myself. So there's that scary damn thing. So it's a well universal. I saw one of these for sale in a marketplace uh, locally to me. It looked in much worse condition than the one I've got. So I'm just going to put that carefully in its uh, on its box to cool down. Right, I've opened the windows now. Get a bit of airflow because you don't want to be breathing in your solder, do you? If you go, don't copy me for your soldering, okay? Honestly, it's not safe. I've no idea what I'm doing really. I've made it up as I go along since I was a kid. Um, there are some soldering tutorials online on YouTube. Have a look at one of those and take advice from someone who knows what they're doing. Right, so I'm going to try this thing here. I don't know when this was made. Off camera, I'll have a look see if there's any markings on it for the date, but I don't think there are. But my guess is I bought this after buying the Weller one, but before buying the, um, the one from uh, Lidl. So it's probably about maybe 30 years, I would guess, and I hardly ever used it because rechargeable batteries are expensive. So these ones, I've had these batteries, probably had these batteries for about 20 years. They don't get used very much. Now apparently I can put these in either one, either hole. I don't know whether you can see it on there. Just here. It says you put them in, positive end down, on both sides. So these batteries are charged, but they haven't been charged for quite a while now, maybe a month or a few weeks at least. I've got to make sure I put this cap back on the right way around, that's it. And you can recharge this if you've got the right charger. It needs 4.5 to 6 volts, but it only recharges NICADs. So this was back in the day before when we had NICADs. You can't buy NICADs anymore. Uh, they're still used, according to Big Clive, in medical equipment and equipment that needs to run at a very low temperature uh, and needs to be in charge all the time. But nickel metal hydrides, which are the ones in here, have a different um, way of charging, a different charging profile. So you can't charge nickel metal hydrides in a NICAD charger. So I can't charge them in here. So anyway, let's have a go at this one, see how long this one takes to heat up. There we go, let's get in shot. Here we go, three, two, one. Of course, these now are much better. There are much better rechargeable soldering irons you could buy now. Is it ever going to work? That's the question. And the answer to that question is no. Uh, it's the following day today. I did some extra testing of this and it's not working at all. Um, I Even after shooting that video, I took it to pieces or tried to with this screw. And unfortunately, this part here and this part here appears to be sealed, um, either glued or welded shut. And the only way to get it to pieces to see if I can fix it is to actually break the casing. Uh, bear in mind, I'm never going to use it again. I think I'm just going to put this one aside, probably end up um, uh, scrapping it because it's no use to anyone at the moment. After finishing off this video, which included talking about this solder tinner, um, I shot another video, which was the repair video for this, which failed. But I did learn something when I did this video 
which is relevant to the video you're watching now. So I thought I'm going to reshoot a few bits and uh, sort of tidy it up a little bit before I put it up on YouTube. So um, coming back to this this um, Weller soldering iron, um, we we timed it at about 10 seconds to go from cold to um, melting solder. And on here it says you should only use it for 12 seconds in every minute. So that means you only get two, two seconds of useful soldering time on it. But that's not actually the case. This is designed to be used on a bench where you're doing lots of soldering jobs one after the other. So um, basically when it's plugged in, you hold that down. It takes about 10 seconds to get hot from room temperature. And then when you let go, it still retains some heat. And because the heating element is quite big, it stores quite a bit of energy and retains quite a bit of heat. So if you was to pick it up a few minutes later to do your next bit of soldering, it wouldn't take 10 seconds to get up to operating temperature. It will only take a few seconds. So that gives you plenty of time to do your next bit of soldering and release that without exceeding the 10 seconds. Um, but for me, um, there's no point in using this because the tip is too big. So I've set everything up again and uh, I'm going to show you what I use when I'm doing normal soldering jobs. I use this soldering iron. Uh, it's just a cheap one but it does the job for the small amount of soldering I need maybe once or twice a year. Um, but I'll ask you a question. If you're into all this stuff, this is my quite big pack of solder and I can't tell whether it's got any flux in it. When I was fixing, trying to fix that calculator last night, uh, and the video will be up in a week or two, um, I realised I needed more flux um, and this doesn't actually tell me whether there's any flux in it. So I've ordered some flux anyway. So flux helps you to get um, it. You put flux on as well as your solder, uh, as well as your solder. Um, and what the flux does is it makes an, uh, an airtight um, environment for the solder to, to properly bond to the metals. It drives out impurities and uh, makes the it basically makes the solder joint better and easier to flow the solder onto the joint you're using. And quite often when you buy a solder like this, it has a rosin core or a flux core. And I don't think this one does. So inside this is a tiny tube and it will have flux inside it, which will help make your soldering uh, more effective. But I don't know whether this has got the flux in it. So anyway, I've ordered some more flux and flux does not keep for very long. So when I was ordering it, I noticed it. you have to keep it in the fridge and it's only good for six months. Then you get some new flux. And that's important when I talk about this stuff in a minute. So let me just show you, um, for those who don't know about soldering, let me just reiterate, I am not an expert and you need to be looking for some expert advice before you start it. It's dangerous. It's hot. The fumes are toxic, um, less toxic now than they used to be when the solder contained lead. But you really, if you're going to do a lot of soldering or even a little bit, you really should be watching, uh, learning from someone who's better at it and more trained than I am. But in any case, let's just show you what I use here. So imagine you've got your solder stuff on your desk, your soldering job on your desk, and you put the two bits of metal together and you melt some solder onto uh, onto it. Those fumes you don't want to be breathing in. And if, you main, if you've got solder left on your soldering iron, which I can't actually focus on at the moment, then this is what you need to use to get it off. You can use a wet bit of uh, sponge. It goes in the solder there. But from what I understand, when you're doing that, you're cooling your soldering iron down quite quickly. And we live in a very hard water area here. So there's a lot of uh, minerals in the water. And when, of course, you put this in the water, then those minerals get on there. The water evaporates, leaves the minerals on your solder tip. So I've got used to using this here. And this is just like a copper wire and you stab it in there and it takes off any solder that is left on the end of your solder tip and leaves it in a, a better condition. Now, this is a brand new solder tip I put in yesterday. So let me take a break and sit down because I want to show you this. It's easier if I adjust the camera. So this is the bit I learned yesterday after shooting the original video. This is 
um, soldering iron tip tinner and I thought you only need to use this when you've got a brand new soldering iron and the point of it was I thought was to prepare your soldering tip for use with your solder so it takes the solder better and essentially you're supposed to just heat up your soldering iron to the correct temperature and roll it in the tip tinner like that and the instructions I saw online said put it on your damp piece of sponge but if I do that I'm just putting more um, uh, more contaminants on it because of the very hard water we have in this area so by doing this what I've learned is you can see that silver now I don't know whether you can see it it's much more silver now than it was and I can't do my normal trick like that there we go that'll do so you want to get it off and what I've learned since yesterday is this is uh, an I think it's an alkaline based flux paste with a little bit of solder so if you get solder wire with flux inside it then that has more metal for your soldering and a little bit of flux to drive out the impurities and what this is is mainly flux with a little bit of solder and what happens is the flux gets rid of the impurities on the tip of the soldering iron and then leaves puts a little bit of solder onto the soldering iron which essentially prepares it for making a good solder joint you can see that that's quite silver um, and that's why I don't think it's going to be in no it's not in this video but when I opened this yesterday when I shot the first part of the video I said this solder does not this um, tip tinner does not look, look the same as I remember it and this white surface area here what I think it is is the um, the flux in this because it's a good few years old now is now past its best before date and therefore it might not be as effective as it normally is or as it should be so if you're an expert in soldering do I need to replace this tip tinner now you can tin the tip on your soldering iron by using a piece of solder hopefully which has got uh, flux in it and then just coat the tip of your soldering iron and then wipe it off again and that should give you a tip which is good for your soldering but um, the the best way of doing it so I have heard a long while ago is to use, just use tip tinner like that and I'll probably use this each time I'm backing away from the fumes I'll probably use this each time you can see there's a big blob of solder on that each time I want to do a soldering job I'll now use this tip tinner to get the soldering iron in the best possible condition so that's it for this video thanks very much uh, future videos will include an attempt at fixing this uh, so go down to the description box and in the description box for this video you'll find links to related videos you'll also find a link to my patreon page you don't need an account of patreon to have a look at the sort of things i post so you might want to go off visit that page and see whether you want to contribute towards me making these videos through patreon or you can just give me a super thanks by clicking the thanks uh, button at the bottom of this video so thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video